to the point today. Meetup game, 5 p.m., Gardens Casino. Let's go. It's 24 hours since the meetup game. I wanted to touch on a few things before getting into the hands. Number one, in case it wasn't clear enough already, this was a meetup game hosted by Andrew Nimi and Brad Owen at the Gardens. They're gonna be doing this once a month from my understanding. I think for the first six months of the year. So if you guys didn't get a chance to make it out this time, there will be plenty more chances to do so in the upcoming months. Anyway, one more thing before jumping into the poker. I'll be visiting Arizona this week. If you guys are avid watchers, you're watching this on a Tuesday, I leave tomorrow, Wednesday morning to Arizona for I think three nights or so. I'm gonna be playing at Talking Stick Resort, which I'm sure you locals are very familiar with. Make sure to come say hi if you happen to be playing there as well. Anyhow, back to yesterday's events. The Gardens has two $5 big blind games. One is 3-5 and the other is 5-5. If you guys ever decide to play one of these games here, I suggest you play the 5-5 because the buy-in for the 3-5 is only $300 fixed, which is just 60 big blinds and doesn't really leave much room for maneuverability. Instead, the 5-5 is a 600 buy-in game, so there's a lot more creativity to apply in the games, I think, and you'll just have, uh, more to play with. Anyway, enough of that. They got something like 15 tables or so, so a lot of action to be found here. I bought in for 600 and got into some hands right away. So without any further ado, let's get into some poker hands. So here we go. First interesting hand. We see an early position open to $15 and I look down at king queen offsuit in the hijack. I'd normally lean towards three betting this hand but this game just opened and I don't want to be that guy. At least not just yet. So I make the call and the big blind comes along as well. So three ways to a flop of queen 5-4 with two spades. Big blind decides to lead right out into the initial raiser for $20. The early position player calls. I don't really know what's going on, so I decide to just call as well. Turns the three of diamonds. Once again, the big blind puts out a bet, this time a little bit smaller to the tune of $30. This time the initial raiser folds. I still have no idea what's going on, so once again, I decide to just call and see what happens. Rivers the four of diamonds shouldn't really change anything, but he puts out a bet of $100. You and I both know, I'm just gonna make the call here, and indeed, that's what I do. And he shows 6-5. So a nice little head scratcher to start off the session. Shortly after that, I open ace-jack offsuit from under the gun to $20. A little bit light, but we were shorthanded at this point, so I think it's fine. Folds to the small blind who decides to raise it up to 50 which is obviously a pretty small raise. This guy in particular was one of the more special players at the table. He had done some really weird stuff already, so I don't really know what this means and decide that there's not much to do aside from just make the call and play in position. The flop comes down King Jack Seven Rainbow and he puts out a bet of $20. With middle pair, I'm not going anywhere just yet, so I decide to call. Turn comes the four of spades. This time he bets $50. Not really loving it, but not hating it enough to let it go just yet, especially against this opponent. I decide to make the call one more time and see what happens. River comes the 10 of whatever, and this time he bets $100. I don't think I really beat anything at this point, even against this exact player type. So I decide to finally let it go, and indeed he shows me ace king. Nice hand, bro. All right, in the next interesting hand, there's an early position open to $20. 
The player from the previous hand calls on the button and I look down at pocket aces in the big blind. Definitely time to raise it up so I make it $90. Unfortunately, the initial raiser folds but the button makes the call. So heads up out of position to a pretty safe looking flop, 9-4 deuce, rainbow. On this kind of board texture, I'd typically bet pretty much my entire range for a small sizing. But because this guy had shown tendencies to float with pretty much anything, regardless of size, I decided to change it up and size up a little bit. Any sort of pair or backdoor equity, he's just gonna continue no matter how much money I pile in here. So I put out $100, but unfortunately, he makes the fold. Still nice to pick up aces and take it down. Shortly after, we see an open from early position to $15. Middle position player makes the call, and I decide to make the call in late position with 5-3 of diamonds. It's probably questionable, but being that this is a meetup game and I'm looking to play some fun hands, I decide to get in there and see what happens. The small blind comes along as well, so we see the flop four ways, which comes down queen four deuce with two clubs and one diamond. It checks to the initial raiser who puts out a continuation bet of $55. Action folds to me, and obviously we're not going anywhere, but I'm looking to proceed with some caution because he's pretty much potting it into multiple opponents here. So I think he's actually got something. We have an open-ended straight draw, a backdoor flush draw, and maybe, just maybe, we can rep these clubs if they come in since I don't think he's gonna be c-betting flush draws this big. So heads up to a turn after the small blind folds, which is the gin card for me. The six of diamonds giving us a backdoor flush drop, but more importantly, the nut straight. Good news is my opponent continues betting, this time to the tune of $90, and it's decision point here between calling and putting in a raise. My opponent only has around $350 behind after this $90 bet. So it's a bit dicey because I expect him to shut down on a lot of scare cards on the river and possibly even fold if, say, a club comes in and I decide to move in. He can pretty easily fold hands like king-queen, ace-queen, even over pairs at that point. So I'm not really sure what the best play is here. I decided to raise because if I did have any sort of semi-bluff here, I would just pile all the money in here and try to maximize fold equity. So I decide to just rip it in there and try to get max value while there's still value to be had. And my opponent goes in the tank for a really long time here. I think around three or four minutes, but unfortunately decides to let it go after some deliberation. As soon as that happens, I feel like a complete idiot for raising there. But hindsight's 2020. Obviously we would have got max value if he did somehow have a hand like ace king of clubs or some sort of flush draw and if he did have an over pair we give him a chance to call now before the board gets scarier on the river with like a straightening card or the flush coming in so i don't really hate the play but in this exact instance obviously it didn't work out props to my opponent for making a disciplined fold next hand is a little bit of a mess but i'm just telling the story you guys so the player on my right opens to 25 dollars and I look down at ace, king, and diamonds. I raise it up to $90, and he makes the call. So heads up in position to a flop of 944 with two spades. He checks it, and this is one of those flops that I mentioned earlier I'd be c-betting with pretty much my entire range. With a hand like ace, king, I actually wouldn't really hate checking back because we're gonna have the best hand so often, but I like to bet small and just protect my equity. So I put in a bet of $50. It's fairly dry, so it's okay to size down here. Surprisingly, my opponent check raises to 150. I think this is a mistake because there's really no hands he should be check raising on this board. I'm gonna have all the strong over pairs like aces, kings, and queens, and that's just not hands that my opponent's really gonna have ever given the preflop action. So I decide to use that to my advantage here and apply max pressure. I think this guy is gonna know that I have all the over pairs in my range and he really doesn't. 
it's kind of funny because if I did have aces or kings or a hand like that, I would just proceed with a call, but I'm just gonna hope that my opponent doesn't know that when I rip in $700. So that's what I do, and he pretty quickly shows a nine and lets it go. Kind of a weird hand, but in the moment, I just felt like it would work, and luckily it did. Literally the next shuffle, I get dealt 9-6 of hearts, and if you're gonna play big slick, you can't discriminate against big lick. So when there's an open to $15 and a few callers, I certainly am making the call here in late position. And sure enough, flop comes down 10-9-6. Action checks to me, I put in a bet, and we take it down. So not really a lot of action, but it's just kind of funny the fact that these two hands happen back to back. A little while later, action folds to me in the cutoff and I look down at ace king. So I raise it up to $20 and only the small blind makes the call. So heads up in position to a board of jack 10-7 with two hearts. Small blind checks, but this isn't really a board that I want to start barreling on. I feel like the small blind is going to connect with this texture a lot, so I decide to just check it back. Turn card, however, definitely changes things. The queen of diamonds, giving us the nuts. He bets $15 here, I raise it up to 50 and he doesn't think too long before making the call. River's interesting, it's an offsuit 9, so it puts 4 to the straight. Obviously, any king is pretty much the nuts here. So when he checks it to me, I contemplate for a while here on what sizing to use, and eventually decide that this isn't a spot where I want to bet really big. My reasoning being that if he has a hand like 2 pairs or 1 pair or something like that, he's not going to call a very big bet at all now that the board has run out this way. And if he has a king, I expect him to check raise any sort of small sizing that I use. So I eventually bet $45, however it turns out he does not have a king when he just makes the call. We show the winner and he says that he had 2 pairs. In the next hand, action starts on the button, raising it up to $25. I look down at queen jack of hearts in this small blind, and I think all three options are actually fine here. Even though a fold seems really weak, it's gonna be hard to continue every time we miss the flop out of position. And also a three bet seems fine since the button can be fairly wide here, but I decide to just call and try to navigate post flop where I feel most comfortable. At this point, I see another player call the $25 across the table and I hadn't noticed, but I guess this player missed his blind and had posted to come back into the game and he now makes the call as well. So three ways to a flop of jack five deuce with two hearts. So much for missing the flop, huh? I check it to him and he puts out a bet of $65. I think this is a spot where a lot of people will kind of get a little too carried away and check raise hands like this, but for the most part, a pair and a flush draw should be played as a check call. If we're check raising, we don't even know if we're bluffing or value betting anymore, so I decided to just make the call and see what happens on the turn. Turn card is probably one of the best in the deck. It's the Jack of Diamonds. This isn't a card that I expect my opponent to put me on all too often. I check it to him and as expected, he checks it back. So I think he's going into pot control mode with a pocket pair here. River is the absolute best river. The Jack of Spades, giving us four of a kind. And of course, our hand looks like a missed flush draw if we bet here, which technically it is. Unlike the previous hand where we had the nuts on the river and a big bet would be a mistake in my opinion, this is the total opposite. I want to bet big here because I want my opponent to think that I missed my draw. So I put in a bet of $200 and he thinks for just a few seconds before making the call with pocket sevens and we take it down with four of the exact same kind.
The last hand we'll go over today is a pretty fun one. We decided to do bomb pots every dealer change, and this was the last one of the night for me. We each put in $25, so 25 each, nine players, that's $225 of dead money sitting in the middle. We all get dealt two cards and go straight to the flop. This one in particular, we get dealt six deuce off suit. God, what an awful hand to have. The board comes down ace nine six with two diamonds. At least we flop a pair, but when the action checks to me in the cutoff, there's no way I'm putting in a penny. And the button checks behind. Man, this is such a bad hand. Oh, all right. I can't believe I ever thought six deuce was a bad hand. Especially so when the small blind decides to lead for $100. Action folds to me. I don't see any point in raising here, so I just make the call and the button folds. So just two of us left standing here in this bomb pot. River cards the jack of spades, which shouldn't really change too much. This time the small blind checks and there's really only one play here. He only has, I think, around 275 behind at this point. I decide to rip it all in there. Hopefully he puts us on like 8-7, miss flush draw or something like that and just calls down with an ace. But unfortunately, he pretty quickly shows the ace of hearts and lets it go. He made it look like a really easy fold, but in his exact spot, I'd actually have a pretty hard time letting that hand go, especially for a pretty decent price in a bomb pot where I could have all sorts of missed draws going into this river. But oh well, happy to take it down nonetheless. Shortly after this bomb pie, I decided to rack up and call it a session. Obviously, I ran really well, but more importantly, I managed to get what I think are some pretty fun hands for the vlog. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And to every single person who said what's up at the gardens, thank you guys for the support. And I look forward to meeting many more of you guys in 2020. that's a wrap for this time guys the final results i played for around four or five hours and won a little over a thousand dollars which all things considered is more than okay with me pretty good results and hopefully this week in arizona i can replicate something along those lines stay tuned for that next vlog if you guys are interested and haven't yet go ahead and hit that subscribe button thank you for watching thank you for giving this video a thumbs up if you did appreciate the support see you guys next time peace